Hello everyone, how's it going? So in this video, I'm going to tell you the top 5 DSA projects that you can make and put in your resume which will help you in your interviews and in getting placed. So you can make a lot of projects. People talk about web development projects, Android projects and there's a ton of different projects. But in this video, we're going to see the projects that specifically use data structures and algorithms. So if you're already good with DSA or if you're learning DSA, then these projects will really help you not only understand the concepts more, but they will also give a boost to your resume and set you apart from the other candidates because you don't see a lot of people using DSA in their projects. So all the projects that I'm mentioning, there will be a reference in the description box. So you'll be getting the code of the projects as well in case you get stuck. You can follow the references from the description box, follow the resources and make the projects yourself and put them in your resume. So let's go one by one. And the first project is a music player. So you might be thinking, how does a music player involve DSA? So let's get into it. What does a music player exactly do? So what it does, you have songs stored somewhere. What it does, it takes the songs. You can make playlists, right? Or you can have a random shuffle. And what it does, it plays the song one by one. And if you have a playlist, then you can either play the next song or you can play the previous song, right? So the data structure is used here. If you think very carefully, then first there's a doubly linked list. Why? Because at a certain point, if I'm playing a song, then I have the option of playing the next song immediately or I have the option of playing the previous song or I have the option of playing any other song. So this is a doubly linked list because you're moving both to the front and to the back. So this you can make with a doubly linked list. Apart from that, there's a stack. And what the stack does is it uses, it's used to store the previously played songs. And apart from that, there's a queue and the queue is used for making a playlist. Because if you make a playlist according to your mood, you see all these apps on Spotify, which have these playlists and they, they are made using a queue. So the songs are stored in a queue. And if you add a song, it is added to the back of the queue and the song is played from the front of the queue. So these three data structures, doubly linked list, stack and queues, these are mostly used in a music player. So you can make a playlist for yourself and you have to implement these data structures and the programming language doesn't matter for this project, okay? That's the best part of it. It doesn't matter whether you're making this in Java, whether you're making this in Python, whether you're making a website, whether you're making an app, it doesn't matter. The main thing is the core concept of how you're implementing, how you're getting the songs and how you're using these data structures to play them. So a music player is a great choice for making a DSA project. And again, like I mentioned, the link is in the description if you want to take reference. Now, the second project is a zipper or basically a compressor. So you might have seen that whenever you click on the file, there's an option of compress the file. So if there's a large file, then we have the option of compressing it and basically like uh, reducing the size of it. And then we can extract it and it gets to its original size. Like you have these softwares like 7-zip or WinRAR, etc. They do this exact thing. Now, if you've studied uh, computer science thoroughly, then there's an algorithm which is called Huffman encoding algorithm. So before we start with the rest of the video, let me tell you about this amazing platform called Cryo. So Cryo is a website where you can learn new skills and get your dream placement. So they have placement courses, they have a course on full stack development, and they have a course on backend development, and they have the best content that is out there. So they have a course of fellowship program in software development where they teach you software development skills in either backend development or full stack development. So if you are someone who's working in a company and you want to upscale yourself, you want to join a better company or you want to join a fan company, a higher paying company, then you can take this course. And they also have a free trial, which is the best thing. So even if you're not sure about the content of this course, you can book your free trial and you can see for yourself the content that they have. And not only they teach you about full stack and backend development, they also teach you data such as an algorithm and interview focused system design content. They also have that. So they have everything that you need in order to crack your dream company. And you can also check their placement statistics. They have general placement of around six to 15 LPA. And some people even get a placement of 15 to 40 LPA. And apart from that, they also have a separate full stack web development course and a backend web development course where you'll be working on real time live projects with working professionals. So it'll be just like working in a company. You'll gain some real life experience by working with these professionals and you'll be able to add these projects to your resume and build your portfolio. So you can definitely check these courses out. And if you are someone who wants a good placement, who wants to join a good company, then this is something that I would definitely recommend. So go click the link in the description and book your free trial now.
If you haven't studied it, if you haven't heard of it, you can check it out online. You can watch a video, you can re read a blog. It's an amazing algorithm. And what the algorithm does is the same thing that we mentioned. It compresses a file. So if you look at a file, what is it exactly? It's a system of binary, right? Every file, whether it's an image, whatever it is, it's a system of binary. So Huffman encoding algorithm, what it does is it takes that file and it compresses it. So you have option of compressing and you have an option of extracting. So you can use this algorithm, Huffman encoding algorithm, and you can make a zipper software that can compress a file and then you can extract the file into its original size. And that is also a really impressive project that you can make. Again, the link and the resource are in the description box. Now, the third project that you can make is something like a Splitwise app. So if you don't know what a Splitwise app does, then let me give you an example. So I went on a trip with my roommates in college. We went to Calicut and we used the Splitwise app, all of us. So what was happening was sometimes someone would cover the expense of everyone. Someone would cover the expense of food. Someone would cover the expense for two people. Someone would cover the expense of everyone. So at the end of the trip, we don't have track of who owes what amount, right? So I might be owing my friend some money. He might be owning all of us some money. So something like that. And we don't know how to keep track of that. So Splitwise is an app that does a fantastic job and at the end of the day it does all calculation and it tells you how much amount either you are owed or how much amount you owe someone else. And I was recently on Lead Code solving a problem and that problem had the exact same logic as a Splitwise app. So at that problem also I'll give a link in the description. I don't remember the name of the problem but it had the same problem statement as a Splitwise app. So you can make an app like that basically and you'll be using graph algorithms. So what is owed and what is like basically owed by you, you can make them using like edges and you can use a graph algorithm or a dictionary algorithm to solve this problem. This is a fantastic problem. You can check the lead code problem out and you can even check the reference that I'll be given in the description. This is a fantastic project and you'll be learning a lot about graph algorithms and about dictionary algorithm when you make this project. The fourth project is related to games. So a very common game is Sudoku. So if you have one of those old phones, those Nokia phones, then all of them used to have a Sudoku game. And even in newspapers, you would see that there's a column for playing Sudoku. So if you're really new and you don't know what Sudoku is, then let me tell you. Basically, Sudoku is a huge block, which is divided into nine cross nine blocks. And then there's three blocks, three cross three blocks as well. And the goal is to fill the blocks in such a way that in every 3 cross 3 block you don't fill a repeating character from 1 to 9 and horizontally and vertically you don't fill a repeating character. So it's an amazing game and the difficulty can be according can be set according to you and even on lead code there's a problem for solving Sudoku as well. So if you think really clearly about the picture of a Sudoku then it might remind you of something like recursion or backtracking. So this is a like uh, al this is a game that can be solved using backtracking and that's what you use in the lead code problem as well. So this is a pretty good game that you can make and solve using the idea of a backtracking. So you can make a Sudoku block and you can ask the user to solve it and at every point you can have a function is valid Sudoku and you can tell whether the user is going right or not. So again, I'll give you the references in the description and I'll also give you the lead code problem. Try solving that first. It's a great problem and you'll get to learn a lot about backtracking. So not only you'll make a great project, but you will also learn a lot about backtracking as well. Another game that you can make is actually Wordle. So Wordle is a very popular game where you have to guess a word and you're given certain chances. And Wordle is a project that doesn't require any high level algorithm or any high level DSA. So if you're just starting out using DSA, then you can make a game of Wordle and you can just store everything in either uh, a list of strings and using a map. So you can just use basic data structures to make a game like Wordle. And that is also a great project for starting out because it does not require any high level DSA or any high level algorithm. If you're just starting out, then I would suggest everyone to make a game of Wordle. So if you don't know about Wordle, then I suggest playing it first because I'm not going to do it just as explaining, just go play Wordle first and try to make a project like that. So these are some great projects that you can use to not only learn DSA, but if you already know DSA, then you can make these projects yourself and have a great shot at clearing your placements because having these projects will definitely do a good job of impressing your interviewer because like I said, not a lot of people 
make projects that truly focuses on the core concepts of data structures and algorithm. So that's pretty much it. In case you have any doubts, please let me know in the comments and let's see each other again in the next video. Thank you.